talking new music, veteran rapper and actor Tobechuku Ejofo, popularly known as Il Blaze, is set to release his seventh studio album on the 24th of February this year. His last was in 2020 and the four-year wait between the sixth and the seventh is the longest since his debut album in 2009. As expected, the news of a new album from Il Blaze, who has also enjoyed rave reviews as an actor in Kemi Adetiba's King of Boys, has sent many hip-hop heads and core fans of the rapper into a frenzy which has generated a lot of conversation in the digital space. So, Kilblis now joins us on the program via Zoom. Many thanks for joining us on the program today. We are literally like just days away from your new album, the seventh solo um, studio album since 2009. How big is this for you, you personally? Oh, this is massive. This is massive. Um, first and foremost, shout out to you guys. Shout out to channels for for keeping a keeping a finger on 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 the pulse on on Il Bliss's career pulse. Like you guys have been. I remember my first interviews at Channels. It's I've been there from my my debut album from when I dropped that Evil Boy in two thousand and nine. Yeah, I remember I had a Hedy's nomination that year that took me to Channels for an interview. Then Channels was at Maryland, you know. So um, I've been there from you know all through the years from from the first album right up to this very point. Um, this is a great, this is a big one. This is a big time in, in my career because um, I've been away from music for, for a while. I've been away from music since 2020. So I haven't made music uh, since, um, I remember a channel's interview that was conducted in my residence during COVID when we thought we were all going to die <laughs> and, not, and not survive. You know, so I remember that being the last contact probably that I have with channels minus running into you guys, you know, on various carpets, you know, for various events. Um, I took a break from music, um, delved into, into television, essentially. Uh, that's, that's, that's my new passion. And that's what's been taking, taking my time. Oh, wow, it's the longest break in between albums since the debut in 2009. It's been four good years between 2020 and 2024. Why did it take you so long? Are you getting tired of music? Or the television and movies is leaving you with no more time for music? Yeah, it was, it was also around 20, 2020. I had um, my wife and I welcomed our second, our second child. Um, so... It took me by surprise because it was also during, it was May 29, 2020, the day, exact day I was dropped half months and we ended up in the hospital. So from there, battling, trying to save, you know, save my daughter, you know, and eventually we did. She came at 25 weeks, you know, that's really, really premature, you know, for, you know, for baby. And that, that was during COVID. And then a lot of that was happening. I was trying to drop an album. That album suffered a lot of promotional setbacks because I wasn't available for a lot of things, you know. It was dropping at a, at a time where I was going through a lot, you know. And after then, I just delved neck deep into fatherhood, you know, trying to, you know, in a post-COVID, trying to get back on your feet, trying to make sure that, you know, but then I, again, I decided television was something I had been working on, like pro producing TV content. Okay, yeah, um, you know, so a, a lot was just happening in my life personally, you know, and the last thing on my mind was to make music, you know, and then I just started, was just wasn't recording enough and time just kept, you know, flying by and... At some point, I just felt, okay, maybe this was God saying, okay, it's time to hang your booth. It's time to oh, hang your boots. It's basically done enough. You know, I have six albums, you know, um, six albums, like four EPs, you know, so I've, I felt like I had, you know, putting my quota in, into the music business, you know, but little did I know that um, it's not always about your timing. It's always about God's timing. It is beautiful to see the faces of your children now on the album jacket. You know, from 2009 with your debut till now, it is, it is well about 15 years. Within that space, you worked with the suspect 
Kel, Terry G, and Co on the debut, al debut album. And on this one, we are talking Vector, Dumudu Black, Tenny, and Co. And this speaks to how things change really fast in the industry. The sound, the key players, etc. Everything is almost completely different from 2009. How have you been able to evolve as well and stay relevant since then? The music business has changed dramatically tremendously you know um within this i mean the years the stipulated years ah where do we even start man i guess the only surviving name on my on my list of credits will be suspect and suspect mixed and mastered this entire sidekai album you know in terms of personnel in terms of um the featured artists everybody i mean it's a totally new day in the music business and um and that's what it is. The only constant thing is change. I just, I am just, I'm just blessed and privileged to be, to always be in the middle of the change. I am always, you know, privileged, you know, to, to just know when, when things are moving in a fresh direction, you know, and then I try to move my sound in that direction and move my brand in that direction as well. Um, it's, it's, it's a new game. It's a new time, a new era. You know, things move differently. Music is distributed so, so differently. You know, um, these days, you know, the fans are, you know, they have each, you know, like, they have all kinds of clusters of fans now. You know, some people are hip hop, some people are Afro beat, some people are, you know, just, um, you know, experimental music. A lot of people just have what they listen to and they tap into your brand for various reasons. You know, but I just made sure that I never lost my essence. You know, I am a rapper. I'm, I'm, I'm a rapper with substance, you know, so I always felt, okay, so while having substance, you need to find a way to keep connecting with this new generation of listeners. Uh, you know, so um, the other day I was speaking to somebody on television and they were telling me music videos are dying and they're being taken over by reels. You know, TikTok determines what, what blows up these days and no longer just radio you know, and, and DJs and clubs, you know, so it's, it's a lot, it's a lot going on. I'm learning every day, you know, um, I'm learning every day. And, you know, you, you look at the way music, my producer, Skita, Skita is a kid from Joss that I met in um, October, 2022, you know, accidentally just met him through a, a, another friend of mine and I met him and, and his music brought me back, back to recording. Um, he had been doing some work for other artists, you know, but nothing quite as epic and as phenomenal as what we created. So we started out like, okay, I like his beats, you know, let me just do one or two records and just keep it moving. And then we went from two records to five records, you know, to 20 something records eventually. By December, 2022, I have the album ready, but I didn't want to drop it in January, February because of the elections. I felt people were going to be distracted. Finally, let's go um, a little deeper into the creative process of this album. In what direction are you taking us on this project? It, it's a much, it's, it's a much, it's a very soulful album. It's soulful, it's melodic, it's mid-tempo, you know, so I had to also go and study, you know, the way music, the directions music go now, the emotions, you know, like, you know, music is an emotive art, so... Uh, I just found out that music had slowed down a lot in the last couple of years. Music slowed down a lot during COVID. People started to listen a lot more, you know, so it wasn't even about those frenetic, you know, up-tempo beats, you know, high-energy beats anymore. It's just about, you know, a vibe. Music became a vibe, you know, like something people could drift to and just escape to, you know. So, and Skita is that kind of producer, you know, so he made those records that were that were so melodic, drifty, moody, cinematic, you know? I call him cinematic skitter because his chords inspire you to write. So you could hear a chord and be like, wow, I should make a record about my mom. These chords just, you know, just evoke like a lot of emotions in you, like childhood and how you grew up. You know, you'd hear another chord, you'd be like, ooh, I'd like to make a record about being successful. You know, so, and then you hear another one, oh, this is the High Life record. You know, but even like one or two High Life records that were on the album were still not your typical 
kind of records. You know, we're very experimental about it. There's a lot of storytelling about, you know, on this album as well. You know, so it helped me on Borden. It helped me um, um, tap into spaces that I, I always never really used to tap into or never quite did on my past albums. You know, it's a personal album, you know, and um, I'm just speaking about my change, you know, the, the changes I've been through in the last couple of years, you know, the new ill bliss, you know, the father, the hustler, the rapper, the actor, you know, the, the content producer, every every single thing I've been going through, you know, I just put it in the music, you know, and the mood. Skita created the mood for it. I know Afrobeats, the percussions are pretty much Afrobeat percussions, you know, but the chords are very, ah, very cinematic. Many thanks again for joining us on the program today. We wish you all the best, all the very best. It's time now for a quick break and I will see you on the other side of the program.